Okay, so as uh, every day, if you have any questions, be brave. Uh, and uh, you have uh, a good opportunity to ask your questions. If not, then we will uh, solve some problems with uh, um, uh, calculation of expected values and uh, so on. No question. Yeah. Okay. No questions. Let's uh, uh, deal with a big, 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 big uh, uh, Black and Scholes formula for options pricing. Okay. So, okay, let's recover option price, European option price. European call option price. Okay, what is a call option? Uh, we are at time zero. We have a uh, specified in the contract time moment T. Big T is fixed. And um, uh, we have a strike price K. Okay, is a strike price. Strike price. And uh, you have a right, uh, so an option, call option. Call option is a right to buy a share at uh, a price, at the price K. So you have a, a document that gives you a right to buy a share uh, paying the price K. So you have a right to buy. Uh, that's not, uh, uh, you have no obligations to buy, but you have a right to buy. So basically, this is a call option. So, and we'd like to price it in the framework of Black and Scholes model. So imagine that um, uh, the price of call option is T, is CT, T is call. Yeah. And we'd like to find C0 in the framework of uh, Black and Scholes model. So we'd like to have a price of call option. Okay, basically, let's start with uh, final day. Let's start with final date of our contract, date big T. And uh, for big T, uh, it's uh, more or less uh, easy to calculate the price. So, for example, uh, we need to consider only two situations where when K is greater than final, oh, wait, sorry, 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 final share price ST and K is less or equal ST. So let's, uh, uh, let's calculate your profit. So, ST is the price of share, and you have a right to buy a share uh, at a higher price. We will use your right in this case. You can uh, buy a share for free, uh, not, not for free, but you, you can buy a share in the market paying five rubles, and you have a right to buy a share for 10 rubles. Will you use your right? No. No, you will not use your right. In this case, uh, the right is worthless. But uh, in the uh, symmetric case, when uh, on the market shares are traded at 10 rubles, and you have a, a right, you have a paper that says you have a right to buy a share paying the price of 5 rubles, then you will execute your right because. You go to the seller, you pay five rubles, you get a share, and you immediately sell it for 10 rubles because uh, uh, on the market it is traded for 10 rubles. Okay? So, can case, remind yeah. me, CT. 
ST is the price of a share. CT is the price of our call option. Thank you. So what is a call option? Call option is a right to buy a share at, at the price, at the specified price in the contract. Yeah. So the moment big T strike price are constant specified in the contract. The contract says you have a right to buy uh, from the seller of uh, the option one share at time big T at price big K. That's all. That's a call option. And uh, my question is uh, find the price of call option in a Black and Scholes model. And I say that the uh, initial price is a little bit complex to calculate. We know how to do it with martingales, but we need to start with the final price. And final price is easier. In a bad situation, you just don't execute your right. Yeah. In a bad situation, if uh, you have a right to buy paying 10 rubles and you can buy uh, without any limits for five rubles, then you just don't use your right. But if uh, market price is 10 rubles and you have a right to buy paying just five rubles, you execute your right, you may resell the share immediately and your profit will be ST minus K. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and now everything is easy. We know that uh, in the framework of Black and Scholes model, how can we calculate the price of any asset? We can just calculate the expected value star of discounted value of future price given current information using this uh, special risk neutral probability measure. Okay. Okay. So this is risk neutral, risk neutral probability from Gersanov theorem. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I I think I didn't listen to the entire last to the part of that class the when you ex ex explained it. Is this E star uh, some expected value or it's it's uh, some I don't know a separate variable of this risk neutral probability? No, no, it's expected value, but. <laughs> Um, there are many expected values. So if you have, if you estimate probability of, uh, I don't know that tomorrow it will be 10 degrees, you estimate this probability as one over two, and I estimate the same probability of uh, that tomorrow we will have minus 10 degrees uh, by three over four. Mm -hmm. So we have different probabilities for the same events. And mm -hmm. if we will calculate our expected values, they will be different. You will have your expected value. I will have my expected value. So mm -hmm. it's just expected value, but with uh, mm, respect to a specified probability, Probab not uh, uh, default uh, real probability, but uh, with respect to risk neutral probability. So it's just expected value, but uh, with respect to some uh, specific probability measure. So mm -hmm. it's, it has all the properties of expected value because it is expected value, but probabilities are mm, a little bit uh, uh, different from real. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so just a matter of notation to uh, not to, to avoid writing two lines, uh, usually we write like this, so we can always write like zero if uh, uh, st is less than k, st minus k if um, uh, st is uh, greater or equal than k. Uh, or we may just write using indicators, 
another tradition just write st minus k times indicator that st is greater than k or you may uh, also write uh, something like st equal to st minus k uh, plus uh, that basically means the same thing and you may also write something like uh, maximum of uh, st minus k and zero. Basically, that's the same thing, but just written differently. But same thing. Okay, so we just need to calculate expected value. So. Uh, I recall uh, that there are two probability measures. We have a uh, uh, share price can be expressed in many ways. For example, like S0 times exponent of uh, mu minus sigma squared over two times T plus sigma WT, where WT is a winner process with respect to probability measure P. And this T may be also expressed like exponent of R minus sigma squared over two times T times WT star, sorry, times, sorry, times sigma times WT star, where WT star is a winner process with respect to probability measure P star. Both expressions are correct, but we will use the second one because under um, second probability measure, under probability measure P star, we know that MT equal to discounted uh, CT is a martingale. If you use uh, uh, under P star, yeah? So if you use probability measure P star, then discounted price of every asset in the framework of Black and Scholes model is a martingale. Let's go on. So the only thing we need to answer the question is just to calculate uh, C0. We, that will be conditional expected value of ct minus, oops, sorry, st minus k plus, uh, sorry, discounted, in just a moment, exponent minus rt, ct minus k plus, uh, given f0, and we need not expected value, but expected value star. So basically, the problem of uh, pricing an option is reduced to some probability calculations, okay? So we have no finance, just expected value to calculate, okay? And why don't we compute the <clears throat> M0 as the expected value of the same, but expressed with MT? Because this is a martingale. So that's our goal to calculate C0, yeah. I mean, will we use MT here? Use it, here it is. Okay. We use it exactly. C0 is expected value. Uh, so we exactly use it. M0 is a martingale, is a... So exactly, we use this fact, here it is. But M0 is C0, and this is exponent minus RT. We have already used it. What do we mean by we will use it? We have already used it. Yeah? Oh, I see, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. We need ST here, sorry, ST, not CTs. Outside, ST is inside, sorry. Okay. 
Can I ask, you, can I ask you a question? Ah, yes. Hey. So, uh, can you please uh, tell me once again what is the uh, difference between? Uh, well, first of all, why we use risk neutral probabilities? And we have the, the fact. Why we have you? Why we are using? Because we, our goal is to price an asset, and we have proven this fact. Proven during last week or maybe two weeks ago. So we have proven a handy fact to calculate expected values. Now we use it. Okay, thank you. And second question. Uh, I I forgot. Okay. I have a question, but it's British. Yeah. Why m zero equals to c zero? Give their expectation. M zero. Ah, because there is t is also zero. Yeah, it's one. Yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. So we only need to calculate expected value. The only random variable is ST, the price of a share. K is specified in the contract. Big T is specified in the contract. R is the parameter of the model. So we just have um, exponent minus RT, uh, ST minus K plus even F zero. Uh, let's, uh, this is a big, ugly expression. Uh, it's not just one, uh, no, it, it, it is not very simple. So we will do it part by part. Basically, we can say that is, um, Exponent minus RT times uh, risk neutral expected value ST minus K multiply by indicator of A, where A is an event, ST is greater than K. Okay? So if uh, the price of a share is high, I get positive. Uh, option value at final time t. If the price of a share is less than k, then I get zero profit at final moment of time t. Okay, so it's minus rt, expected value of st times indicator of a minus k times indicator of a given f0. Let's uh work with these two terms uh step by step term one and term two i will start with term two because it's a little bit easy and we will get some uh, some experience before going to term one i will start with term two because here st is a random variable and k is constant so it's easy to work with the second term i was start with the second one and uh, um, and we will also do the first one okay so let's start let's start with uh, uh, expected value of k indicator of a because k is a specified constant in the contract so it's k expected value of indicator of a given f0. So it's k probability star of a given f0. Any, any questions? No questions so far. Okay, what is a? So, uh, I'm sorry. Could you explain, please, what is uh, what is the meaning of indicator indicator of a? Not clear, actually. It's a random variable. What is indicator of a? It's a random variable, and it will be equal to one if a happens, and it will be equal to zero otherwise. So it's a random variable associated with an event. 
Can you please emphasize the difference between P star and P usual in this case? I don't understand your question. These are two different probability measures. We can calculate P, we can calculate uh, P star. So we can calculate P of, if you like, we can calculate P of A given F0. It is useless in our case because the price is given by P star, but we can do it if you like. Uh, how how would you like me to emphasize the difference? So what would you like? These are two different probabilities. We can calculate the first one. We can calculate the second one. So this will be two different. This will give us two different results. Do you understand that, uh, it correctly that we use uh, probabilities? star because discounted price will be a martingale under these probabilities yeah, exactly exactly boris Barisic, could you clarify what does f0 contain in our case all information are available up to time zero mm, thank you so the, for example you know uh, what do you know it depends on the exact setup of your model whether it goes up to minus infinity or just it starts from zero. So at least it contains current price as zero. If, uh, so it depends whether you are modeling on zero plus infinity or whether you model from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in this case, it contains only variables associated with uh, time t equal to zero, like you know as zero. And in this case, you know, um you know you know uh s zero s minus one s minus square root of s minus two s minus two point five you know a lot in this case you know only s zero okay thank you Boris Borisovich mm -hmm. I have a question yeah uh, could you please explain how did you obtain from the expected value of the, the indicator the probability? Imagine you have a random variable r that is equal 1 or 0. And probabilities are 0, 7 and 0, 3. What is the expected value of r? One point seven. One point seven, and this is exactly the probability that R is equal to one. Okay. So basically, if a random variable takes value one and uh, zero, as in our case. The expected value of this random variable is just the probability that this random variable will be one. Okay. Clear. Okay, let's go on. So expected value of K times indicator of A given F0. We have already proven that it's K times probability star that A happens. So it's k time probability star that s t is greater than k. So I have two expressions for s t, one with w star and one with w t. Both expressions are correct, but I will use which one? W star. Yeah, because it's easy to calculate probabilities p star when you are working with W star, because they uh, have a, there is a match between them, W star will be a winner process with respect to P star. So I just uh, uh, calculate as zero times exponent of R minus sigma squared over two T plus sigma W T star. That should be greater than K. Okay. Excuse me, I didn't understand how we got from the, the, the probability of, of A uh, to the 
S T greater than K. What is A? Oh, oh it's a yeah, it's a condition. Okay, thank you. A is just a shorthand not to write something indicator of S T greater than K. Just write indicator of A. A is the uh -huh. case when uh, the final option price is uh, strictly positive. Okay, let's go on. The only random variable here is WT star. So it's K times P star. And here I write WT greater than, it's a small exercise to you, given F0. So just transform of just two or three minutes, just it's like a basic algebra from school. Just pull out WT star from this inequality. So because the only random thing is WT star. S0 is also random, but it's known. I don't care about S0. <clears throat> so you need to pull WT star from this inequality. Isn't it natural logarithm of k over s0 minus r minus c? Yeah, so character. it should be greater than, um, uh, so we will divide by, by what? By sigma, I think, yeah? So it will be a logarithm of what? K. K over s0, yeah? Minus r, r minus sigma squared over 2 by t. There's bra these brackets actually r, r minus sigma squared over 2t minus r minus sigma squared over 2 by t yeah like that yes yes okay but uh we have a perfect match wt star under probability measure p star as which distribution normal normal, normal which mean which variance Yeah. Is normal? Uh, zero and the variance One. T. T because we have T there. Okay. W winner process, uh, the variance grows. Yeah. So it starts like this, and the variance because you have a bigger. Uh, Bigger um, borders they grow. Okay, so we will additionally divide by square root of t. And if we divide additionally by square root of t, we can get a really normal distribution with mean zero and variance one, logarithm k minus logarithm s zero. Uh, minus RT plus sigma square root T over two divided by sigma square root of T. And uh, basically, uh, basically, we, there is no closed form expression for this uh, um, uh, for this probability, but we may either write like k times uh, one minus f 
of logarithm k minus logarithm s zero minus rt plus sigma squared over two times sigma squared out of t. We may write like that, where f is a CDF of standard normal random variable, okay? Okay. Or we may just, uh, uh, what we may do, we may just write, we may inverse the sign. Yeah, we may multiply by minus one. And may we, we may write like k times f of a logarithm as zero minus ln k plus rt minus sigma squared t over two divided over sigma square root of t. We may write like that. That's also a good answer. Any questions? So, excuse me, why did we eliminate sigma algebra? Uh, because we know that uh, double ut star minus double u zero star is uh, independent of w uh, sorry of w of f0 okay that's the property of brownian motion clear fast yeah. information has uh, no uh, is in uh, so future changes are independent of past information okay so basically expected yeah. Yeah. so probability of something with uh, wt star given f0 i don't care what exactly is uh, probability that something happens with wt star minus w0 star because this is just zero uh, and um, we may safely omit uh, this uh, uh, sigma algebra because by the, I don't remember which one, third, fourth, second property of winner process, future increment is independent of current information. So conditional expected value is equal to unconditional one. Yeah, and we get rid of Sigma algebra. Thank you. Okay. okay. Let's move on. May I ask so, a question? Yeah, 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 certainly. On the previous page, okay. can you please enter the previous page? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and uh, the last but one uh, line. So let, 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 let me number them. Just wait a moment. Oh, will be one, two, three, four. Four, four. Okay. It's line number four. Okay. Do we really need this star uh, with uh, the probability sign? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, be right I that it is K. The, because I specify the distribution, I don't care. So it, it's, I have, so the, the crucial step is to have the same there, but I have written like not a random variable, but a distribution. So it doesn't really matter under what probability. I mean, yeah, 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 usual yeah. or asterisk. Yeah, because I have specified distribution, so it doesn't matter. Okay, okay, okay thanks. So honestly speaking, from the uh, rigorous mathematical viewpoint, we need probability of uh, or random variable greater than a number, not a distribution greater than a number, but uh, any random variable that has distribution normal zero one under p star will give me the same result, so I don't care. Okay, thanks. So honestly speaking, we need to write probability random variable greater constant. Yeah, and I should write there from rigorous mathematical viewpoint uh, like that. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Uh, 
it's not important. The most important thing that the random variable has this distribution. Okay, okay, clear. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, continue with the first term. So if you remember, so we still need to calculate term one. It's a little bit more tough, but let's go. Okay, uh, let's call this constant, let us call this constant, uh, let us call this constant like, uh, like this constant, let's call it, let's call it to simplify, I don't care, let's call it D. Okay, so we need to calculate the term one, expected value of ST times indicator of A, given, uh, given, given, given F zero. Once again, we can read off uh, uh, W, so using the same logic, we can get rid of this uh, um, sigma algebra, why we can do so? Why? That's a good point. We can read off, get rid of there. Because ST is independent from F0? Because we cannot uh, know the ST from F0. Yeah, uh, yeah, the logic is the same. Because basically, this is some function, some function of uh, WT star. Yeah? Because if you know wt star, you know the value of that random variable. And uh, this is also a function of wt star minus wt w0 star. And uh, this increment is independent of f0. So basically, we can emit sigma algebra. But this sigma algebra elimination works only with F0, right? Because uh, W0 star or W0 equals to zero. Yeah, uh, but you can do it with, uh, uh, if you change F1, then uh, it's not too complicated. So if I need, to, if I have F1 there, then I can add and subtract F1, uh, uh, W1. So if I have a expected value of ST times indicator, even F1, then I will do like, so I can use the same logic. I will say that uh, WT star is uh, WT1, W1 star plus W, T star minus W1 star. This is independent of F1. And this is known at moment one. And I can take it outside expected value. So this will go outside. Yeah, this is key. Mm -hmm. Expected value. And this will be independent. Will go. So basically, the technique will be the same. I will represent uh, the value I would like to calculate as a sum of uh, something that is known, perfectly known at time moment one. And this value will go outside the expected value. And this will be independent of F1. So the basic idea will be the same. Yeah, it is easier to work with time moment zero, but uh, the idea will work for, for any, the idea that we can get rid of um, Okay. Let's, well, let's continue. So it's, um, expected value of S0 times exponent of R minus sigma squared over two times T 
plus sigma W T star, given indicator that W T star is W T star over square root of T is greater than D, yeah? Any question? Everything is okay. Okay. Why, excuse me, why so? What, what, how do we? That's exactly A. That's exactly A. A is uh, ST greater than K, or we have simplified it that WT star over square root of T is greater than D. Why this is more preferable? Because finally, this guy will be normally distributed with mean zero and variance one. So basically we have proven on the previous page that uh, st greater than k is completely equivalent that uh, scaled wt star is greater than some value d, okay? Okay. So just um, okay. Never mind. Let 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 it let it write a. Uh, so I take out everything that is known. So s zero exponent r minus sigma squared over two times t. Uh, times expected value of exponent um, sigma square root of t times w t star over square root of t times indicator that let, let, let me write like this indicator of w t star over square root of t greater than d okay any questions excuse me i don't understand mm the second line from the bottom indicator of a you just say no um the second line from the bottom third one what's the problem we take everything out of expected value because they are constant what is left inside uh, do we multiply okay, or should we add? Okay. No, no. Okay. The, before the expected value star, should it be plus or multiply? Multiply. Multiplication. Yeah. Multiplication. Because exponent of a plus b. Oh, it's inside the exponent. This okay. is b. So we mm -hmm. just exponent of a mm -hmm. times exponent of b so it's, uh, addition inside exponent but yeah. as a whole it's a product mm -hmm. okay so basically this plus is transformed into multiplication okay i got it thanks okay let's go on our long uh, derivation is not finished yet. So we are working, I recall that we are working with term one, expected value of uh, f t times indicator of a, and it's f zero times expected value of r minus sigma squared over two times t multiplied by expected value of 
exponent of sigma wt star times indicator of a. And we know that a is an event that we can make money in the future. And it basically that scale at wt over square root of t is greater than a constant d, a big ugly constant d, yeah? Okay. Yes. Okay, so it is S0 exponent R minus sigma over two. Times expected value. Um, Excuse me, Boris Borisovich. Yeah. May I have a question? Yes, yes, yes. You are uh, always have a question. Do you have a mistake maybe in the expected value star? Uh, so the indicator should be oh, outside yeah, the yeah. exponent. Yes? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, pam, pam, pam. Okay, so it's exponent of sigma square root of t times wt star over square root of t times indicator that this scale it. So wt star over square root of t is greater than d. So basically, what we need to calculate, let, let's call it uh, z. Z is normal. 0, 1. So we need to calculate on the P star. Yeah. We need to calculate expected value of exponent uh, alpha z times indicator that z greater than d. So maybe it's better to write here. Right here. Gamma to make it different from d. Okay, that's our goal to find this expected value. Gamma is sigma multiplied by square root of t. Yeah, exactly. And that is just wt star divided by square root of t. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now the boring integral from minus infinity to infinity exponent of gamma z times indicator z, uh, z is greater than d, uh, f of z dz, where f of z is just uh, one over square root of two pi exponent minus d squared over two, it's uh, PDF, this is probability density function for standard normal. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. But they get a Nobel Prize. So. Um, it, 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 it is not expected to be easy, finally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, let's go on. So it's integral from minus infinity to infinity. Um, 1 over square root of 2 pi. Um, exponent minus z squared over two plus gamma z times indicator that z is greater than d dz. Integral from infinity. So I don't know any short way to find this integral. If I, I will say you if I will find Probably not. Okay, uh, so I will use the trick 
from middle school just to complete the uh, just just try to find full squares so it will be exponent of minus one over two z squared minus two gamma z plus gamma squared and plus gamma squared over two greater than z is greater than d dz okay Yes. So that guy is constant. We will move it out. So it's exponent gamma squared over two times integral from minus infinity to infinity one over square root of two pi. And here I have exponent of minus one over two z minus gamma square root indicator z z is uh, greater than d dz. Now we do a change of variable. Z is, uh, I don't know, u plus gamma. And dz is just du. And z greater than d is transformed into uh, u greater than what? Z minus gamma. Yeah, exactly. Z my sorry, not Z. D, D minus gamma. gamma. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you are silent, then you are silent. Okay, integral from minus infinity up to infinity, square root of two pi exponent of minus one over two u squared um, indicator that u is greater than d minus gamma du exponent minus u squared over two indicator that u is greater d minus gamma du One final, almost final step. We have exponent. So who is with me? Uh, but is this yeah. minus mu squared over two? You. Minus you. Plus expression. No, no, no. We have you there. Okay. So we just. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So it's exponent gamma squared over two times integral from d minus gamma up to infinity, one over square root, root of two pi exponent of minus u squared over two du. Any questions? Because we are almost done. We have almost finished the calculations. I don't understand what, uh, why we decided to write that Z is U plus gamma. Uh, to, make, to have uh, here U, just to make U there. Mm, okay, and I don't understand the... Um, why um, u is greater than d minus gamma? Because z is greater than d, just plug in uh, u plus gamma is greater than d, u is greater than d minus gamma. 
Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing. Okay. Is basic. Mm -hmm. Why did the limits of integration change? Now we have instead of minus infinity, d minus gamma. Because we integrate a function, uh, what, will, what, what is this function really? How does it look like? Let me draw it. It looks like this function. Looks like it will this be is zero blue. until d minus gamma. So it's zero until d minus gamma. And then you have a, a part of the standard normal density function, and you are calculating that integral. Maybe we even don't need just just let remove this ugly stuff. Let us just draw the picture. Maybe it's a better idea. Yeah, I think it's a better idea because we can write the answer. So what is the first <clears throat> without one. So it's just a standard normal density function. Okay. This is a PDF of normal zero one. Okay. Yes. This is u. This is f of u. When you multiply it by indicator, what does it mean you multiply it by indicator? Sometimes you multiply by one. Sometimes you multiply by zero. So when you multiply by zero, you multiply by zero when u is less than d minus. So this is a point d minus gamma. You multiply by u by zero. And from this point, you multiply by one. Okay. And you need to find the area under the blue curve, not under the red one, but under the blue curve. Obviously, the area you would like to find there is that one. Okay. Yes, sir. Anyway, so my answer is just exponent gamma squared over two times probability that a standard normal random variable will be greater than d minus gamma. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay. And gamma is the constant that equals to sigma square root of t, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, Finally, we have our expression for the first term. So term one, expected value of st times indicator of a is exponent of gamma squared over two times probability that a normal standard random variable will be greater than d minus gamma. And it is exponent of uh, square root of uh, sigma times square root of t squared over two times f times one minus f of d minus gamma. And gamma is this expression like that. So it's exponent of sigma squared t over two times one minus f of d minus sigma squared like that. Or we may write exponent of sigma squared t over two times f of of uh, sigma square root of t minus d. OK? OK. I'm sorry, can you remind, please, d is a? Uh, d is a big, ugly. Mm. 
D is a big ugly. That guy is D. That guy is D. Oh, thank you. So finally, we can write uh, uh, the answer. Uh, so our final answer. Pum, 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 pum. Let me just copy this ugly guy. I will just copy it. Just a moment. D is the logarithm of k minus logarithm of s zero minus r t plus sigma square two over t. Uh, sigma two. So here's the answer was uh, k f of minus d. Yeah. Uh, and so final answer. The The option price is exponent minus RT times term one plus term two. And it is uh, exponent minus RT times, Oof. oops, sorry, 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 we forgot there. Uh, sorry, 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 it's not like that. It's only, no, 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 no. Everyone is silent. As always, uh, sorry, this is uh, exponent term one has a S zero before it. Yeah, uh, what we have calculated there is just uh, part of term one. Yeah, that is just just part of term one. So we need to write S zero exponent r minus sigma squared over two times t. So let's collect everything. So term one. So it's not is not is uh, just uh, expected value star. So we need to collect everything. So it's just exponent of sigma w t star times indicator. Yeah. It's not the whole term two, term one, sorry. Term one is S zero times exponent uh, R minus sigma squared over two times T times that part. Uh, exponent of sigma squared T over two times F. And plus term two is just k times f of minus d. Isn't it supposed to be minus term two? Ah, minus term two, yeah, minus term. Yeah, exactly, minus term two. And finally, something will disappear. Uh, first term will leave us with S0 exponent minus RT exponent RT will disappear. S0 exponent minus sigma squared over two times T times F of sigma square root minus D minus exponent minus RT times K times F of minus D. So this is a current price of a call option in the Black and Scholes model, where D is uh, the copy of, a, of an ugly guy, logarithm of K minus logarithm of S0 minus RT plus sigma square root two over two, sigma square root of T. Finally, we get it. I'm sorry, but do we really need the exp the exponent of minus sigma squared over two t? Um, ah, sorry. Here, no. Yeah, because it will disappear. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. 
you are right. Yeah, because we have that everything cancels out completely. So we have R minus R, we have uh, sigma squared over two, and we have sigma squared over two with different sign. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So basically that's all for today. We have derived the Black and Scholes option, call option price formula. And uh, have a nice day. See you uh, later in the evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Is my ask a question? Where is very Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as I remember from course of finance, this D of D, they have meaning or I'm mistaken. Uh, yeah, we may find uh, some meaning, but yeah, you may find this. So if mm -hmm. basically uh, that's, so you may re-express uh, this event, <clears throat> maybe not D ha have meanings, but uh, so basically mm, that is a probability. So what is this? So basically F of minus D has meaning. D itself, I think it's ugly. It's yes, yes, ugly to have a meaning. F of D, so yes, minus D. That one is um, just, so it just A, yeah? Mm -hmm. It just reformulation of A, yeah? Uh, yeah. It just a reformulation of A. So basically this term has a meaning that it's a probability star of A happening. Yeah, basically it has a meaning. Uh, so it's a probability that the option will be in the money. Yes. Uh, what about that one? I'm not sure. Maybe you should ask some financial guy. So I'm more about math. I don't. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I, I. I don't claim that there are no sense to this probability, but I'm not sure about the sense of this probability. Maybe it's. Ah, maybe it's some kind of. No, I don't know. Uh, okay, so once again, P star A is uh, option in the money, right? Yeah, but because what is this? Is a probability star risk neutral probability that ST is greater than K. So there's a probability that. Oh, so this term has meaning. So it discounted expected uh, strike payoff. Yeah, because. Uh, discounted strike is multiplied by the probability of option execution. And uh, this is the probability star of what? I don't know. So I, I don't say that there are no sense, but I know the sense for this term. I don't know the sense. Maybe you should ask some financial guy who will have a course in about financial derivatives. So you can ask about the meaning of this term. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Just expected value. You do, 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 do. Oops, okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Boris Borisovich, uh, no. excuse me. Uh, I uh -huh. also have a small question about the graph you drew just about the near the beginning. Uh, this graph was to explain us what is the variance of the winner process we T. Yeah. Uh, could you explain, please, why is the variance growing in your graph but not constant? As we have T fixed. But uh, my plot, in my plot, T changes. In my plot, T changes. Yes, we have T, big T is fixed. Yes, yes, T, T is fixed. 
yeah, it is fixed in the contract. But if you compare two contracts, one for two years and one with five years, in this, T is constant. In that, T is constant. It's written on the paper. Right. T is five on one paper. Anyway, T is five. Okay, you have another contract. T is Very one. I'm sorry, may I ask a question? No, 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 I have just the previous one. So mm -hmm. the variance for this WT is, great, is less than for that one. So yes, T is constant in the contract. But if you compare two contracts with T equal to two and with T equal to five, WT will have greater variance or greater T. So it, it depends on the meaning in which you use the term constant. Constant in the contract, yeah. It's not random moment of time. But if I compare two contracts, the variance of WT will be greater for the contract for which T is greater. So no contradiction. Yes, clear. And I I, I have may show you the yeah. plot, but but the plot says yes, the T is specified in the contract. But if I compare the so if I compare two contracts, yeah, yeah, T is specified. We have one contract that says about that random variable and that about that. Yeah. Clear. Th th thank you very much for the explanations. Clear. Brisbane Research, uh, mm -hmm. we don't really have links for today classes, so maybe you can send it in yeah, the yeah, chat I as well, like you do. It. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Brisbane Research, can you please upload the like this PDF yeah. format of 24th November? You forgot. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, I will do it. Yeah, 24th no of November. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah.